Hey everyone, Sari here, and welcome back to another week of Light Season Offense matches. Without one of my merged Light Mythics as a bonus unit, it was time to let Guinevere and Selkius have some time off while some other units got the spotlight. Morgan's got another round of Dragonflowers since the last time I used him, and ended up getting most of the week to himself. His weapons were fine, lets Morgan exploit any penalties on his opponents, doubling down on them and crippling their stats. Being a ranged unit gives him a lot of flexibility too, giving him an easier time picking off a key target or two before tanking the remainder of the team. Close Foil helps him do that, and since dragons are pretty scarce in light weeks, it doesn't have much of a drawback. It's also a great way for Morgan to keep himself healthy in the enemy phase. It triggers about as often as noon time, and the larger heal is really noticeable. No follow up helps him handle auto follow up threats like Bramamond and Duo Leaf in the enemy phase, along with any impact or wary effects that might prevent him from getting a second hit in. Panic Smoke, meanwhile, has gotten even stronger with Note in the picture. His weapon's bleach in effect can take advantage of both normal debuffs and panicked buffs, turning even the worst opponents into an easy fight. Paula ended up being a really fantastic bonus unit for the week. Having Kanto available in a light week was really useful, and helped enable a lot of the strategies I used. Air and Milla, meanwhile, are the main enablers for Morgan. The combination of Tamari and Sabotage Reds get his weapon online really easily, letting him start fights even on the first turn. Dogger can provide him with a full set of plus six buffs on even turns, while Peony's Orders Enabling Dance never stops being useful. There was one match this week that was just out of reach for Morgan, so Dimitri got a chance to step in and take one too. He's an extremely powerful mixed phase tank, combining damage reduction with a full spectrum of smoke skills from Atrocity and Panic Smoke. Together with a slaying effect for easily triggered noon times, he can sustain his way through entire teams really easily. You might also notice that I'm using attack speed solo for both Morgan and Dimitri. It's a helpful perk of the new skill lock feature, letting them share the seal as long as they're on different teams. I'll probably start specializing the support squads a bit more in the coming weeks, too. Now that we've gone over the teams, let's get to the first match. This is going to be a fun match to start the week. I will say that I, when I saw this at first, I didn't think I'd get to use Morgan to clear it. They've got quite a lot of blue on their team, and Fjorm in particular with her new refine is a bit of a problem for Morgan, since she can neutralize penalties, which really cuts into how much Grima's Truth can work. We've also got a Leaf, and Zoro with her attack tactic, which at the moment only hits Leaf and Robin, and Robin herself with her fresh refine and remix. It's I think this team is mostly just a in in season legendary, plus a couple of mythics to mitigate losses without too much effort. But it will be fun to take this apart with Morgan, assuming I've figured this out properly. I wonder I'm going to take this first turn to Disarm both of these traps. If you say so. Can smite air forward. Which takes out the first one. Yes. And then she can break this. And that's both traps. Good morning. We'll have Peony jump over Dogger to dance her. Hmm. Morgan can flip Dogger out of the way. Death's caress. And Air can do the same for Peony. I bestow my blessing. Now we'll move up here and open up space for her to move into next turn. And also isolate Azura, which is pretty important since Azura herself won't be able to do any damage to Morgan. And now that we've got our wave skills online, we'll smite Morgan up. So I actually did forget about the range of Note's Menace. It's hitting Paula here and is letting Note do a chunk more damage than I planned out, but he should still be okay. 
So we're going to keep going as is. And while Note does get to hit pretty hard here, Orkin still gets to fully charged soul. The glimmer of life. We'll have air move over here. I'll handle it. We'll flip Peony up here. Mm, Dance Morgan forward. I'm not too worried about this panic manner since it's pretty low level, and okay. Morgan's going to heal himself out of its range. He will get to take a chunk of damage in the enemy phase from Fjorm and like Bremland, but it shouldn't be enough to take him down. Robin can't actually do damage to him, but she's attacking first since she doesn't take damage from him. Fjorm should move in next since she doesn't die. She also doesn't get to use Ice Mirror here either. Morgan actually gets to heal a little bit before Bramland attacks. <laughs> and from here, he should just be able to heal right back up. Down goes Zura. And well, <laughs> Leaf doesn't get to do much either. Clearing out Note and Dimitri like that was pretty important since it actually let Azura buff Bramment with the attack tactic, and well, that gets panicked and turns into a much more manageable fight for Morgan. So from here, we're just going to need a couple more turns to pick these ether pots up. I don't think I can reach them it's both this turn, done. sadly. But that's okay. Maybe Robin and Fjorm shouldn't really pose too much of a threat for Morgan. Got him. And we'll just sit back and wait. Fjorm should get herself knocked out this turn. She doesn't actually even get to cancel penalties. Oh wait, no, she got healed, right. And while Robin can do some damage now that she's not nicked, it's not enough to put Morgan into any real danger. You won't win like that. Down goes Fjorm. So from here, we can just pick up the second pot. Morning. Dance Morgan. I'll handle it. Flip Peony down to get the solo back online. Okay. And then he'll finish off Robin. Actually gets to tank a bonfire here, which is fun. This is the end. That was fun. Definitely not a Morgan friendly map, but we made it through anyway. On to the next one. So this match is going to be very interesting to pick apart. It's... I guess it feels a little appropriate to run into one of these, given that I've been subjecting people to it myself. But this is actually a very neatly structured Dancer Sigurd with, or Dance Trap rather, with the 7th unit Katria, and Note, which lets him dance her immediately and threaten most of the map. And there are a lot of rallies on this team to try and scramble anybody's ability to predict where anything's going to go, and also try to keep the triangle attack ball together. I think I've figured out how to deal with this, but there's a very good chance that I have misread something and it's all going to fall to pieces. So we'll see. This is the first time I've run into one of these defenses. It'll be interesting. 
The first thing I'm going to be doing is dodging this turn one. And I'm going to do that just by pulling back into these two corners. It will be done. Ready. Which should avoid Sigurd's threat range once he's on this tile, and stop anything else from moving. Oh, it's not Sigurd who moved at all. Interesting. So, Triandra moving here really messed with my game plan. I was... I had everything planned out for Sigurd <laughs> moving instead, so... Triandra moving gives us a lot more space to work with, but I also need to reconsider the entire map. So, I'm going to start by picking off this Dark Shrine. Good morning. Which is going to I'm let Mila there. actually start sabotaging again. And that's pretty important. Then we're going to smite Morgan over to the left. Okay. We'll have him break this statue. The glimmer of light. Can flip Dogger to the left, and Mila like can it. just scooch over a space. From here, we need to do a little bit of creative maneuvering. It's already We're going done. to start by flipping Peony up, and using Kanto to mm, let Peony give an way. orders buff to Dogger, so. which lets her move down here for Morgan, it will be done. and gets Mila over here to yes, get her yes. down into this spot. And we wait one more turn so that we don't have to deal with odd recovery. Okay. So from this point, we're going to smite Morgan forward. What's the plan? And start by having him one shot Triandra. We're actually going to flip Mila over this way. Dance Morgan is going to okay. claim the defense tile and bring down Catria. Getting rid of triangle attack really lowers the threat of the team overall. And like then this. we'll have Mila reposition Peony back. And from here, there are a lot of ways this can potentially go, but I think we're actually going to start by seeing Seekert move forward to attack. So, let's see how this plays out. Oh, this is perfect. Okay. So Seekert goes in first because he actually has the best damage ratio of anybody on his team. Just as I planned. And from here, Lena should actually heal him instead of attacking Morgan, since she can't kill Morgan. And now Morgan should just sweep the rest of the threats on this team. Checkmate. <laughs> there goes Nope. And then ends can't actually move in thanks to the tactic room. It's so from done. here we're going to do a little bit of maneuvering to try and close this out. We're actually going to smite Peony this way. And that lets us pick off Lena and take Odd Recovery and her palm staff off the table. And this also heals Morgan to full health, ahead of having to tank Inns and Sigurd Seisberg next turn. The glimmer of life. And getting rid of odd recovery also means that Inns stays gravitated from our tactic room, which is very useful, since it lets us start moving air up here. Good morning. 
Death's caress. to pick off some structures and start getting ready to pick up these ether pots before the end of the match. Ins goes first, which is fine. Fool. The extra distant guards from Peony do a lot of work for him. Know your place. And then Secret moves in and gets himself killed since Only if it is with you. He doesn't have damage reduction anymore. You won't win like that. What's so from here, since Inns got stuck in place last turn, it gives us plenty of free space the to start getting ready to pick up these pots and close Ready. out the match. Yes. I wonder. Okay. Boss. And we'll move Dogger here. I bestow my and we'll move here. I think he's going to be oh no he's chasing after Peony. Excellent. I thought he might go after air. But from here we can just pick up last pot okay. and let Morgan close things out. That was one of the trickiest matches I've cleared in a very long while. It was good to clear that though. Let's see what we get next. This match should be a lot simpler than the last one. It's a bit odd to not see Note here, and I kind of wonder if this empty space is supposed to have her in it. They do, however, have a fun little infantry pulse in the corner set up. It's been a while since I've seen one of these, and I think for the most part they've gone out of fashion thanks to pulse smoke. But if you don't bring pulse smoke to the table, then they can still be pretty dangerous. And they have their team set up for an instant blazing wind on both Ophelia and one of their Bremmans, along with the Glacies on the other Bremman and another one on Micaiah. This deflect magic Ike is actually a bit more annoying than it might seem at first, since it reduces the damage of the second hit from a magic opponent by 96%. And that's enough to actually stop Morgan from being able to knock him out in one round, just by attacking into him. I think, at least. Now, it should actually be alright, since Morgan would be able to one round him with the extra stats from Close Boil. It will be done. If you say so. But we're going to navigate around that anyway. I'll handle it. I do need to make sure that I break this panic manner. Maybe Since it can actually panic Morgan, and I'd like to avoid that. But other than that, this should be a done. pretty straightforward clear. You can just smite Morgan up here. Yes. Move Mila up like to this. here to get him buffed. Hmm. And just have him attack Ike who does end up surviving with one hit point. This does charge up his ether, and he is going to get healed by the healing tower, but neither of these things should actually matter. Since we'll take some damage from the two Bremmans, but Ike and Micaiah shouldn't really be able to do anything at all to him. There goes the first one. Meet your defeat. Places should do a chunk, but just as I planned. Not enough to put Morgan in too much danger. Blazing Wind goes next. And well, doesn't really accomplish much at all. And then I think... oh, no, looks like Ike doesn't do damage. A summer celebration. To be fair, you won't win like that. 
Micaiah doesn't either, so... I should move in. I will defeat you. Mm, not this time. And that lines them up very nicely for the next turn. Okay. So from here, we could actually finish this off in this player phase this turn. But where's the fun in that? We can let Ophelia get her blazing special oh, off. Give her a fighting chance. What's the plan? Good morning. It's not really much of a fighting chance, but at least we give her a shot. Not getting a whole lot done though. Just as I planned. And down she goes. And Sylvia's not getting anything else done. Nice and easy. On to the next one. This match is going to be an interesting one, just for a chance to see a... Legendary Seekerd. <laughs> who's out of season right now, and that actually makes him a lot easier to handle than he might usually be, even with his pre-charged Holy Night Aura. They've also got him backed up with a Leaf, a Selena, an Inns, and these two distant guard seals actually make things a little more annoying to deal with, for Morgan at least. A plus 10 Tethys, is quite impressive, honestly. The Tamari Sabotage and Ploy are a really nice set of debuffs to be able to throw around the map. And a Triandra is their only mythic. It's... this is an interesting team. I think most of the threat is just from Seagard, and if you can handle him, then the rest isn't that bad. I mean, Selina is a pretty big threat too, and ends if he gets to use this Luna, can be pretty painful to deal with as well. So, with all that said, assuming I've done my math correctly, this shouldn't be too bad to deal with. A lot of my plan comes down to having ends get hit with this tactic crew, which means that we should be able to bait out the rest of the map I bestow my while leaving him alive. Oh, that was real. I'll handle it. That's fine. Right, boss. Move Dogger over here for next turn. And sit in place and wait. So here, what we're going to do Maybe is smite so. Morgan over this way. Move him here, Ready. dance him, it and by moving Mila up here, we should be able to have him one-shot this leaf. Now while this does mean we're going to tank Holy Nidora, Morgan should be able to finish Secret off in one round of combat. And even though it buffs everybody, Inns should never be able to move more than one space thanks to the gravity effect, and will also be able to bait and kill Tethys. And the only reason we could is because we broke this Dark Shrine, which lets Mila sabotage her. What's so, the plan? let's knock Leaf out. <laughs> and see how things go. It's already done. We'll just move Paula here. Yes. And have Air flip her over to safety. And here we go. Secret moves first since he can actually do a On your guard. pretty decent chunk of damage with his Holy Night Aura. Amateur. We don't get to heal from the soul, but that should be okay. Since everybody relevant gets panicked, 
which means that Secret actually ends up debuffing all of his allies for 6 attack, and means that Selina can't actually do any damage to him. Just as I planned. Tethys moves first here since she heals Morgan for less, and then Selina moves in and closes out the turn. And she can actually do some damage now, thanks to the dagger debuff. And that just leaves Inns. Who very considerately stayed in our tactic room lane. So from here we're going to need to take another turn just to let Inns move forward so that we can trap him properly. And to do that, we're going to count on him continuing to chase air. Ready. And in the meantime, move like everybody this. else into position. Got him. Good. He's behaving very nicely. So from here, we can continue to use Paula's Kanto to help trap Inns. And we can just move Air up here, okay. Morgan up here, it will be done. Right and then get everyone else worked around. Maybe this way. To start Maybe picking these pots so. up. So we're going to need to take one more turn to reach these pots, or both of them at least. What's the plan? But we're almost there. I'll handle Paula it. can break one of them and Kanto back into position, yes. while Air moves up and gets ready to take the other. And now that we're ready, we can pick that one up, and Morgan can close out the match. Just as I planned. Indeed. Let's see what we get next. This match was a bit of a heartbreaker. It was a really fun defense to pick apart. And I actually ended up making a couple of mistakes that ended up costing me the match by the end of it. They have a really solid setup here with this <laughs> Fire Sweep, Fatal Smoke, Wrath, and a Dance Trap with the Geoseeker. It's tricky to handle a defense like this without being able to dodge the turn one, and even if you can, it's not always easy to get on top of it. I did manage to dodge the turn one, though. And with the tactic room out of the way, it made things a lot easier to navigate in the following turns. Unfortunately, what I'd done was planned for Sigurd to not be hit by the tactic room, forgetting that it would, in fact, hit him on this following turn. So I had to spend a few turns readjusting. In the end, I actually had a working plan for this, and once we got everyone rearranged, it's easy to smite Morgan over the lake and have him start by taking down the note. Unfortunately, I moved Paula in the wrong direction here, and if I had moved her to the right instead of up a space, she would have baited Sigurd away from the rest of his team. Unfortunately, as is, after Wrath takes a shot at Morgan, Sigurd moves to the left instead of down, which lets Triantra aerobatics over him, and then the ground orders lets Alina take down Peony. This match is going to be another interesting one to see. It's the second Catria map of the week, and it's kind of interesting to see two of them in one week after not seeing any so far. They have um, a bit of an odd trap with this Sarah and Seeger. 
And I think part of the problem with this is that they just don't have Sarah's set up to cleanse anything except Seeker, assuming everything gets debuffed. So they don't actually get to cleanse isolation from either of these dancers, which can be a major problem for their team, and one that I'm hoping to take advantage of with this clear. What I think should happen is that usually if you just try to stay out of range, Ryoma jumps forward to dance, and if he can threaten something, or gets threatened by something, Seagard will run up and rally him, and then Triandra dances. But, if we isolate the slain, Triandra doesn't actually get her debuff cleared off, it's just Seagard, and what I'm hoping to do is have Seeker What's the plan? Ready. Run off okay. to rally Leaf on this first turn. It will be done. And we're going to pull Dogger over this way. If you say so. And That's move gross. air out of the way of Leaf. So what I think should happen first is the rally, you know, and then the dance, you know, and then another rally, and then Sarah should attack, but even with triangle attack active, she's not really that much of a threat to Martin. Leaf should move in next, since he can do some damage, but he doesn't actually get triangle attack anyway, so... He does not really threaten Morgan too much. And then Triandra moves in and gets herself knocked out. That went pretty well. What's so from here, what we're going to do is just pick off Ryoma and remove all of their dancers from the equation. And then we're going to retreat. Just as I planned. Maybe this way. We can dance Morgan. We'll I'll have Paula flip Peony down here. And then she's actually going to stay put instead of cantoing. Like this. We can flip Peony over this way. Okay. And then Morgan can flip Paula to safety. While we have air, retreat. Oh. And we did end up having our tank Sarah here, but that's okay. She's got enough rest to do it. From here, we're going to have to do a little bit of juggling to avoid Seagird, since we do still want to pick up these pots, and the easiest way to do it is actually to leave Sarah alive, as long as we can. What's so we're going to pick off Katria here. Which gets rid of any orders nonsense that we have to worry about. Good We're going to dance Morgan. And then we're going to have Morgan jump down here. While Air moves right. into this corner. Right, boss. And we'll have Lilla flip the peony down. This should get Seeker to rally forward. While Sarah gets herself into a combat that does absolutely nothing. And then Sarah should get flipped over here. Yep. I wonder. Now that they're in a better position, we can flip Morgan up one more time. Okay. Start by having him take down Note. Maybe this way. 
then what's the plan have him handle seeker <laughs> and now that we've got Sarah on her own it shouldn't be too hard to run around and pick up the pots got nope, em. I'll just smite my up this way it will be done and have her take down this dark shrine no air moves over here None of these units should be threatened by Sarah at all. She can do a bit of damage to Peony, but she can't actually double her. Like and then from this. here we'll let Noah pick up both of these pots. It will be done. Okay. Before having Morgan close out the match. That was a fun match to navigate. On to the next one. So this is going to be an interesting match to go into the end of the week with. They've got a return trap with Sarah, who should be returning this Bramman forward, assuming everything goes correctly, which ends up threatening quite a lot of the map. I've also got an in-season leaf, who's very spooky. Quickened Pulse is an interesting way to try and force him to get this Gale Force without actually using his personal B-Skill, and lets him run a B-Skill like Lull Attack Defense instead, which gives him a lot better punch to his attacks. His Brandman's also very impressive, it's plus 9 with impact and no follow-up. This no follow-up is I'm a little conflicted about it myself. I do think that the lull is really important for letting him just hit hard, which this Bernie is also using. I've also got a plus one Dorothea, whose chill is actually a bit annoying since after this last round of Dragonflowers, Morgan actually ties Dogger on speed, so he's going to tank that for this round. And a <laughs> Impact Tempest note who's very impressive in her bonus week. This Fortify Res is a nice way to make sure that neither of these rallies land on Leaf or on Dorothea. And overall, I think this is a pretty solid setup. It's plus 10, plus 5 Eldigan too. Maybe I'll get mine there one day. I think I have this figured out. I... I'm going to get a little bit aggressive with this, and I'm going to remove Sarah from the equation on this first turn. Yes. It's already so by done. pulling Morgan forward, and then letting Paula wait in place, Maybe we can dance way. her, I and then we'll have her break this. Morgan can run up here and deal with Sarah. This gets his soul fully charged for the first counterattack, or for the first attack on the next phase, which should be coming from No, since she can do quite a bit of damage to him. Right, I'm going to smite Milo over here, and she like can this. jump over here to give Morgan some extra stats for the next phase. Nope moves in first. And gets taken down. Graham should move next, since he doesn't actually heal Morgan. Hmm. Not much, at least. We'll get 42 healing out of him. Amateur. And then... Leaf should drop Morgan down to a pretty low amount of health before getting one shot at And from here, Dorothea can't actually reach Morgan, which is important, since we do want to pick these pots up. Eldigan like goes down, and Bernie gets herself one shot at two. 
isolating Bernie and Dorothea was pretty important to, to stop Bernie from potentially rallying forward and sniping somebody. So from here, we're just going to spend a couple of turns maneuvering while we get to these ether pods. I'm going to pull Morgan back and dance him, which lets Paula jump over him to break this catapult, and then Kanto over this way. <laughs> that was real, good. So now that Dorothea can't actually okay. even reach anything, and it's only turn two, we can actually just have Morgan pick this up right now, and make it easier for us to pick this part on the next turn. It will be done. I bestow my blessing. I'm just yes. moving one over here, if you say so. and Dogger over this way. Yep. And Paul can't really take damage from Dorothea, which is a little too bulky for that. Here, we should be able to close things out this turn. Morgan can pick up that second ether pot. Like this. And then we'll just Got him. use all our movement skills Good morning. to get Peony up to Morgan. Okay. And let him close the match out. Checkmate. That's a pretty scary setup, honestly, but we pulled it off. On to the next one. This will be a fun match at the end of the week. We've got a neat old team with a plus 10 Elliewood. Wings of Mercy is a different choice for him. I'm not sure how well it works out, but I think it could do a lot of work, especially if someone underestimates the bulk of someone like a Byleth, for example. They've also got an in-season leaf, a bonus week note, an in-season Dimitri, who's almost fully merged, and this flashing blade gale force combo is really neat for him, along with Azura and Triandra for all of the dancing. This is very heavily a water legendary team. It's interesting to see that. And I think they've put it together pretty well to actually be threatening, even though it's it is mostly done. just legendaries. We're going to start yes, this just by yes. testing this bolt trap, which is the real Wonder. one. That's good. And then move Paula out of the way. Right, going to smite Doc Morgan over to the right. It will be done. And we're actually going to have him tanking Leaf and Dimitri What's on this first turn. We do get to dodge this panic banner, it only hits 65 hit points, otherwise I'd have to take a couple extra turns to wait before I start this. We should get a rally, yep, and then a dance, and then Byleth moves into attack, I will protect you. which is okay, even though we don't get to kill him. Elliewood can't Wings of Mercy in, and we still survive Dimitri. And then get to heal. Before Leaf moves in and heals us some more. And with this, we've already taken most of the major threats out of the way. So from here, this actually worked out extremely well for us, thanks to Triandra jumping forward. It lets us pick her off very easily. And since we found the real bolt trap last turn, Good we morning. can just dance Morgan forward What's to attack Byleth from here. And this, since we also isolated Azura and Note this turn, is going to let Morgan actually take out both Eliwood and Azura before we have to worry about them. The glimmer of life. And that should leave us with just a note to worry about. If you say so. I'll handle it. I bestow my blessing. Zero moves in first since 
she loses less health. You won't win like that. And then Ellie would moves in thanks to Node's Pathfinder and also gets pretty wrecked. He actually does some damage. The only reason he didn't attack first there was because he, Morgan had a fully charged soul and would have healed from it. What's the so from here, it's really just about picking up these ether pots before we finish the match. And thankfully, we should be able to pick up the first one very quickly. And I'm pretty sure Note is chasing air right now, since she moved this way last turn. Like this. So, with that in mind, we're going to try to keep her chasing air. Yep, excellent. From here, we're actually going to let Peony pick morning. this second ether pot up. It will be done. And we're going to pull Morgan down I'll this way, so that we can make sure he gets to debuff Dogger for the next turn. Dogger over and air over. If you say so. Yep. Right so from here, now that we have no debuffed, we can just smite Morgan over here. Okay. And he can pick Node up and close out the match. Yeah. And down she goes. That went pretty well. Let's see what we get on the last match of the week. This match is going to be a fun way to close out the week, at least assuming I've figured this out correctly. It's a rematch, and I think it's only fair that this tactic room is going to be a major part of why I can clear this the way I am since they used a bolt tower to clear mine. They've got a maxed out Reinhardt, who's very impressive to see. And while this isn't technically a dense trap, they do have almost a forced turn one engagement thanks to these cavalry and note. And they've also got Veronica with Restore just in case. They've also got an out of season Lolina with Guard and whole lot of attack thanks to the life and deaths. And a duo peony for a bunch of extra attack in combat. I'm going to have to be a little bit creative about doing this since it's actually tricky to approach this and I actually really considered using Felix to clear it instead. But I would lose some lift for it and even if I'm not hitting rank 1 at the end of this anyway. I'd like to make sure we do our best with it. I wonder. We're going to clear out this side of the map and have Paula wait in Welcome place. To Dimitri moves down, so. Dogger moves down, but only Maybe after we get way. Peony over here. Got him. Mill is going to stay put, and since we're isolating Veronica, so, which means she can't restore, and this is actually gravitying both Lelina and Veronica. This space doesn't actually activate the map. And we can hide from their turn one. And that dance comes through, as expected. So from here, now that Dimitri has his full set of tech and res buffs, we're also going to be doing this through a Bright Shrine, because Maybe sadly, so. Dogger is nowhere near being able to soak that from Dimitri. It's already done. So we're going to flip Dimitri forward, move Paula down, we can smite Dimitri over the lake, I bestow we're going my to blessing. move Noah this way, Ready. and dance her up to here. It will be done. Which will let her actually buff Dimitri from this tile below Reinhardt. And Dimitri can take him down. We will not lose. Now from here, things are going to get a little spicy. 
I think Lolina is going to be the first one to attack since she has a guard and prevents him from being able to heal with it with noon time. But we should be able to make it through this pretty easily. And at the end of this, Veronica should be the only one left alive. Yep. As expected. We got to turn off her pre-charged special too by waiting a turn, which helps a lot. But down she goes. Selena moves in next, yep. But at this point, we're already starting to heal. And, well, the rest of their team can't really do much better. Oh, no, it's not going to do anything anymore. I thought she'd actually move before Peony did, but I guess not. Note moves in, and since she's panicked, she really just can't get much done. And then, yep, Triandra gets to jump forward, and actually do the most damage of anyone on her team. But even that's not enough to put a real dent in Dimitri. From here, it should be a pretty straightforward pot hunting mission. We can use Dimitri to help corral Veronica back into the tactic room next turn, unless she goes over here, but yes. hopefully not. I we can flip Mila forward and get Paula moving over this way. Like we can take the first ether pot, if you say so. and we'll get Dogger Good moving morning. over here, and get Paulo over it's here as well. Yep, Veronica attacks Dimitri, it does some damage, but it's not enough to matter, and Air actually fully heals him in the next turn anyway. From here, we'll just flip air upwards, have her pick up the Seether Pot, yes. and close out the match. We will not lose. Overall, it was a really fun week. We ran into a lot of interesting defenses this time, and it was really satisfying to clear them. Or heartbreaking for that one misplay. It's great to see Morgan doing this well, especially during Note's bonus week, and I'm looking forward to getting him the rest of his dragonflowers. I do have a Discord link in the description if you'd like to hang out and chat, and there's also a Patreon page if you'd like to help support the channel. As always, I hope you've enjoyed the video, good luck with your own matches, and I'll see you next time!